Awesome. I see so many people from across the country. See California, Pennsylvania, Arkansas. Love to see so many people across the country. Um, okay, I'm going to go ahead and get started. We're really excited to get into this topic of donor retention. So well, thank you for joining us for winning donor retention. Um, best practices for nonprofits. My name is Lisa Galbrin. I'm the uh, Marketing Communications Manager here at Mighty Cause. And um, we have also Josh Garcia here, a Fundraising Development Specialist, who will be leading this webinar and going through um, those retention strategies you can start utilizing. Um, before we do, just a couple of housekeeping things. Um, so one, if you have any question, if anything pops up throughout this webinar, please feel free to utilize the um, questions tool on the Zoom um, dashboard that you have. It's just an easier way for us to see questions that come in all throughout the webinar, be uh, keeping track of the chat just in case, but that's just but that's just the easiest way for us to see any questions that do pop in. Um, this webinar is being recorded, so we'll send out in an email a recording of this webinar as well as a copy of the slide deck so you don't have to worry about um, you know, receiving this webinar or not. We'll automatically send that over to you. So just a little bit of background about Mighty Cause. For those of you who are not familiar with us, we've been in the nonprofit space for a long time, since 2006. We're in one of the biggest technology providers for giving days across the country, including Colorado Gives, Give Minnesota. So we've been in the nonprofit space for a while, and our goal is to create a platform that makes it easy for you to fundraise um, and create that impact within your communities. So we provide the tools that help make that happen. Um, some of that Josh will be talking through um, throughout their webinar, sharing just some of the tools that we have that you can utilize for donor retention. That includes integrations we have, um, uh, donor management tools, peer-to-peer -to -peer processing, uh, et cetera. So um, if you have any questions, again, Josh will kind of go through some of that throughout the webinar, but feel free to ask throughout the chat. All right, I'm going to pass it over to Josh. Um, and yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, really excited to uh, to be here and uh, walk through this with you today. Uh, my name is Josh Garcia. I'm one of our fundraising development specialists here at Mighty Cause. I have been uh, with uh, or in this space of uh, fundraising software um, for about a decade now. Uh, today, what we're going to be focusing on is donor retention, which is something that I've been really focusing on and preaching to the organizations that I've worked with. Um, for as long as I've been in uh, this space. Some of the things that we're going to be focusing on here today is just understanding you know, what donor retention is and concept and the importance of it. Uh, metrics that we can use for tracking our donor retention. Uh, donor communications. Um, so how we can be best communicating with our donors to focus on donor retention and then other effective retention strategies. But as Lisa mentioned, I will be stopping for questions uh, periodically throughout. Um, if you have questions, please just throw those in the chat. So understanding donor retention. What is donor retention? Simply speaking, donor retention refers to the ability to keep donors engaged in giving to your organization over time. Your donor retention rate is how many of your donors in one calendar year will follow up with a donation the next calendar year. Now, why is this important? It costs less to retain an existing donor than to acquire a new one. In fact, it is 10 times more cost effective to keep a donor retained than it is to find someone new to take their place. Obviously, when you think about all that goes into receiving a donation, whether it's the events that you're hosting, the softwares that you're using for donor management, for your donation pages, for your events, uh, time, staff, costs all associated with getting that first time donor. When we only receive one small donation from them and do not receive follow-up donations, we're essentially throwing that whole relationship and money away by not continuing to engage them. Just a quick stat for you all. Last year, the average donor retention rate in America for nonprofits was about 45% of all donors retained. So that means for every 100 donations, only 45 donors to that will make a follow-up donation the next year to that nonprofit the following year. 
So you're losing 55% of donors. That's really huge. Think about it this way. If we have a thousand donors who donate to your nonprofit here in 2024, and you maintain a 45% donor retention rate, by year five, you're only going to have about 41 of those thousand donors left. So think about how many missed opportunities that compiles year over year when we're not retaining those donors. It's also very difficult to pull a donor back that has left. The odds of a donor who donates in one calendar year and then laps, meaning they don't donate the next calendar year, is only about 4%. So when you're looking here, in 2024, we have three months left in the calendar year. If we're looking at everyone who donated in 2023 but hasn't donated in 2024, if we don't get them on a donation this calendar year, the likelihood that they'll come back in 2025 is about 4%. So these are pretty big numbers. When we're thinking about donor retention, it builds predictable and sustainable funding streams. Every day that I talk to nonprofits, one of the big things that they're focusing on is sustainability, about long-term projects and long-term care and long-term initiatives. But without continuous funding, it's very difficult to be able to undertake those. Additionally, a lack of predictable and sustainable funding streams will impact your ability to receive grants. Additionally, by having these long-term faithful donors, you're also developing, or developing stronger relationships with them. These are people who will volunteer, who will host fundraisers, who will speak on your behalf, make introductions, or maybe even one day become a board member. Someone who is continuously donating to your organization is essentially investing in your work because they believe in you. So what does donor retention entail? Donor retention is something that needs to be integrated into your overall fundraising strategy. Donor retention entails creating a personalized donor journey that keeps donors engaged and invested in your mission. Fostering a donor-centric culture where they feel valued and appreciated. Making a donation is very similar to making an investment or making a purchase in that the individual donor wants to know what's in it for them. And in this instance, what's in it for them when they're making a donation is they want to know, how did my donation make an impact? I want to donate to a cause that I care about, and I need to know that I'm donating to a nonprofit that is going to make impact out of my donation. So metrics for tracking donor retention. As I mentioned, pretty simple formula. This year's retained donors versus last year's retained donors times 100. So if you have uh, 130 donors from last year and 45 of them make a donation this year, you have a donor retention rate of about 35%, which would fall below the national average. So one of the things that we want to do is utilize a donor retention report. And this is where having a donor management system can make this really simple. So I'm actually going to show you this here. Whoops. I'm going to show you this here in the Mighty Cause platform. So we're looking at the Mighty Cause platform. I'm going to go to our reports. And I'm going to click on my donor retention. So what I see here is year to date, all of my donors. So we're tracking 261 here in the system. If I want to pull up here, everyone that is not retained, here are 258 donors who donated last year that have not yet donated this year. Look at this number that is sharing for me, $87,000. That is the value of the individual donors that we are losing by not retaining them. A simple thing to be able to do here is we can send out email messages directly to each individual donor. We can use Mighty Cause's automated emailing messaging system to have a yearly reminder uh, for a donation. We can integrate with Mighty Cause to a number of different uh, email marketing tools like MailChimp and Constant Contact to build out targeted campaigns to reach out to these lapsed donors. So this is where having this sort of visual data in front of you is going to allow you to work smarter, not harder, but very importantly, not miss out on these opportunities. Because again, if I don't have this sort of insight into this and I'm not reaching out to them, 
I'm leaving $87,000 on the table. Another thing that we want to calculate is average donor lifetime value. So that's the predicted contribution amount that a donor will give to your organization over their lifetime. Retained donors have a higher lifetime value to your nonprofit than one-time donors. So what we look at is the average donor lifespan. So how long are our average donors uh, giving to us and their average gift amount? Times the total number of donations divided by number of donors. So the average donor is giving us two years. The average donation is $100. And we have 200 donations from 150 donors. My average donor is worth $266 as long as they're with the organization. So this is, again, something that we want to increase through strategic communications and building relationships with our donors. One of the things that we can do is set a specific donor retention goal and wrap donor retention into your overall fundraising goal. So if you've hosted or been to any of the webinars I've hosted in the past, one of the things I talk about very regularly when we talk about these different topics is setting goals for ourselves. So we should think about, you know, look into our system. And this is where something like a mighty cause can help. Go into your donor management system, see how many donors gave to us last year. Then let's set a goal. This is how many individual donors we want to retain this upcoming year. Additionally, we should look at how much did those donors give. And then we want to have a, a goal. This is how much we want to re uh, receive from these donors this year. The goal should be to continue to steward them up the ladder. Additionally, how many of those donors do we want to convert into monthly donors? Here's where I'm going to take a quick pause. Um, are there any questions in the chat? Um, anything? I know this was kind of a high level first to start. Um, about our donor retention, but anything here that we wanted to walk through first. Don't see anything yet, so we'll keep moving along. Again, I'll continue to pause for questions as we go through. So one of the best ways to be able to do so is email. In 2016 or 2023, 16% of all online revenue was directly sourced from email. Sorry. Oops. Now, one of the big things that we want to be able to do is segment our communications. Email segmentation means that we're taking our email list and splitting into smaller groups based on behavior, profile, and interests. So we're going to tailor our communications to different segments of donors. So dollar amounts, donor frequency, programs that they care about, unretained 2023 donors, designated funds, major donors. So there's a lot of different ways that we can do this. A number of ways, I'll show you how you might do this in a system like ours. Obviously, we first identified non-retained donors, someone that we might wanna reach out to. Maybe we come to our donations from the last year. And maybe we want to segment into different amounts. Maybe everyone that gives at least $5,000 is someone that we're going to identify as a major donor. So here, Clayton and Aaron, these are two individuals that we're going to identify as major donors. What we might do in our system here is now go to our supporters and build out these different groups. Here's my major donor list. These are people that are giving at whatever threshold we've identified as considered being a major donor. We might wanna have specific communications to them, a little bit different than somebody who maybe gave a first time one-off gift. Or maybe we we'll wanna think about programs that they care about. For example, I worked with an animal rescue organization. Um, who used in their donation forms a custom question asking, what is your favorite animal, cats or dogs or both? So it seemed like a fun little survey question, got a lot of engagement, but how this organization was using it strategically 
was they are identifying all their donors who said that they wanted to, or dogs were their favorite, all their donors who said that cats were their favorite. What they then do is come to the back end of the system and create a tag for dog donors, for cat donors, and now we can follow up with them, sending them communications about the dog programs to the dog donors. This is the impact of your gift on the dog programs. These are volunteer opportunities within the dog programs. Here's a donation specific for um, uh, dog-related programs that we'd like you to consider. So now that donor is not being inundated with a lot of generic emails, but they're getting information that's most specifically relevant to them. So let's create a communication plan. Onboarding welcome journey. How do you welcome your donors to your nonprofit? Over 90% of donors say that the most important communication they receive from a, a nonprofit is their thank you. A fun fact, I actually spoke once with a colleague of mine who is a certified professional fundraising executive, uh, and we were discussing major gift givers. And she was telling me that a lot of major gift givers actually will start off to new organizations that are considering being a major gift giver too, with small one-time donations to see what kind of response do they get. Are they still receiving an email? Do they receive a phone call? Do you tell them about the impact of their gift? Or did I just get a generic tax deductible receipt? So that first impression is really big. Gift, major gift givers do not start off with a major gift. They want to understand what the relationship is gonna be like with the organization. They wanna understand the impact of their gift. So this is where it's really important we think about those first time gift givers, how can we engage with them? We also should plan for regular communications. We should be reaching out at least once per quarter to check in, ideally once a month. A lot of nonprofits will say to me that they are scared about over communicating with their donors. But actually, the average nonprofit is communicating with their donors at least two times per month. So if you're not regularly engaging with your donors, there are other nonprofits who are. And like any relationship, a donor's relationship with a nonprofit can be spread thin. So they want to focus on those that are reciprocating and building the relationship back. And again, we should create an annual report. So let's think about what did we do this year? And what was made possible as a result of the donors? Let's let them know. Transparency is important. This is how much we raised. This is how we're spending it. These are the things that we accomplished. These are the goals for the upcoming year. All this is made possible by you, the individual donor. So focusing on the welcome journey. That first time donation is the best time to start engaging with your donors. You should send a, a follow-up thank you. I'm not talking about necessarily the automated thank you uh, that is received for a donation. So when people make a donation, on um, most platforms, they will receive an automated thank you. If you're not, you should look into a platform that does. But it's really important that we have a follow-up personalized thank you after the fact. That should be coming within 48 hours, if not 24 hours. An important thing to do is give a little bit of information over time. So not inundating them with a very long message from their first donation, but rather updates on the impact of their gift. Thank you for your donation. Your donation is worth X, Y, and Z. This is what a donation of this amount is able to go towards. Follow that up with a story. Hey, this is something that we did with your donation. This is an example of someone or something impacted by our gift. Make it real. Make it tangible for them. As I mentioned, we can use our automated emails and our integrations on uh, Mighty Cause to be able to leverage these. So the automated emails is a, is a uh, tool that Mighty Cause has. I mentioned this with donor retention. It also can be used in the welcome journey. You can set up so that Mighty Cause will flag when someone makes a first time donation to your organization. In 48 hours after that gift, they will receive another automated email that you can set up to create a personalized thank you. Again, we also integrate with a number of tools like MailChimp and Constant Contact and other tools, uh, donor management systems and communication systems 
so that when submitting a donation can automatically trigger an email into their welcome journey. So this is gonna save ourselves time. It's gonna allow us to be more efficient and effective. And it's going to allow us to immediately start that journey of building a relationship and educating our donors on the impact of their gift. So here's an example of what this might look like. Starting off with number one, the thank you and welcome email. So we're gonna thank them for their gift. Thank you for your first time donation. Your donation is going to go towards X, Y, and Z. Our work is made possible by individuals like yourself. These are the things that we do. You can click here to join our, uh, to go to our website to learn more. You can click here to subscribe to our newsletter. Now we're gonna follow this up with an impact email. This is going to specifically tell them what their donation did. So again, as I mentioned, donors want to think about their own impact. One thing that someone told me a long time ago that I always have had stick with me and I like to really express with the nonprofits that I talk with is donors really like to see themselves as the one who made the impact. And the nonprofit is purely the vehicle through which they made that in, uh, impact. So a donor who donates to a humane society feels like they rescued a dog and the humane society was through which they were able to rescue that dog. Having that kind of mindset is really important because that's how we're gonna wanna communicate with our donors. That's what's going to help build those relationships and make them feel like their donations are that important because they are. We can then follow that up with a get to know what's better email. So more information, maybe a newsletter. Other opportunities to get involved here, are volunteer opportunities. Here's a public speaking event that we're having. Other things that we're doing again, what you're seeing is we're not asking for a follow up donation yet. Donor community spotlight email. So this is where we're gonna share a little bit about our donors, highlight one of our donors. This is one of our monthly givers, give them that sort of special attention and love. Follow that up with a survey email. It's really important that we understand how are we being perceived by our donors? Do they feel the impact of their gift? Are we communicating with them enough? Are we not communicating with them enough? Do they adequately understand the impact of what they uh, their donation accomplished or how we're using their funds? We can use this, again, to be able to better refine our messaging. And now we're going to ask for a monthly donation. Monthly donations are very critical. There's a phrase in fundraising called the golden donation. The golden donation is the second donation by a first-time donor. First-time donor, so someone who makes a one-time donation, if I only make one donation in a calendar year, I mentioned before the retention rate for all donors is 45%. The retention rate for one-time donors is 20%. If you get someone to donate a second time in a calendar year, that retention rate bumps all the way up to 60%. So you are more likely than not to keep someone who's made two donations in a calendar year. So now what we've done is we've given them lots of information all the way through, built this relationship before we then come back to them and ask for that monthly donation. And at this point, they have a lot of information on why we want that monthly donation, the importance of it. So this is not an out of the blue ask. This is something that we've been building towards, establishing trust, and now is when we have that really important ask to develop the golden donation. And at the end of their first year, send out an anniversary email. With all communications, make a human. Emails that are being sent from a real person have a 27.5% increase in email opens. So just a basic example, email from Mighty Cause Foundation versus an email from Lisa. Again, define your impact. Making a gift drives ongoing support for programs such as blank. Your generosity helps fund blank. A lot of organizations that I work with, this is how they're really trying to be able to stand out. Humane societies, feeding, uh, feeding animals, uh, vaccines. Um, there was a program that I worked with once 
specifically what they did was uh, they worked with unhoused members of their community. They did a number of different programs, um, work and study programs, sobriety programs, daycare programs, shelter programs. And they would run different campaigns where they would focus on the impact of those individual gifts. Additionally, they would use custom questions to ask, which program would you like your donation to be applied towards? Then by identifying those individuals, labeling those different tags, so that people that really cared about the work and study programs could learn more about the impact of that. People that really wanted to focus on the daycare program could understand how their donation was helping to support this ongoing program and people who were impacted by it. So think a little bit about what you do and who you impact and how your donors help support that. And then make sure we're communicating that to our donors. So here, going back to what I said, impact data. Your $25 donation transformed a child's school year by providing them with a brand new backpack. With your collective help, we were able to provide a thousand backpacks to students in need. Now, when we go back for that golden donation, we might ask someone that made a hundred dollar gift and say, thank you so much for your gift. Your donation provided four students this year with a brand new backpack. And a donation of just $25 a month will mean that every single month this year, another student will be impacted by your generosity, receiving their first new brand new backpack. Click here to donate today. It's not an empty ask. There's something very tangible fixed to it. So the donor directly understands why I'm asking for that and how they make the impact with it. With all of our communications, Let's make sure that we have a clear and relevant call to action. So we know uh, the people who are opening this, what we want them to do. Think about hyperlink buttons in the emails to take users to a web address or a landing page. So this is whether it's a donation page or we're asking for volunteers or we're asking people to spread awareness have a very clear direct action and make it simple for them by taking them exactly where they can do so. Again, thinking about transparency, sharing our impact. Transparency is huge. When we're thinking about nonprofits, we want to make sure that where we are making our contributions, where we're spending our dollars uh, that we all work hard for, we want to make sure that the, our donors are being rightful stewards or our nonprofits are being rightful stewards of our, do, our donations. So let's make sure that we're sharing that. That goes back to the uh, annual report. This goes back to having the impact statements. This goes back to having updates, including these in newsletters, sending those follow-up thank yous, letting them know what we're planning to do in the upcoming year so that we have the donor already thinking forward. I think a neat opportunity is to include hard copies. As I mentioned, emails are probably going to be uh, the most effective means of reaching the most people and getting the most call to action for a donation. But other touches like a hard copy for maybe our largest donors, our major donors get a physical copy of our year end report. Our largest donors might get a personalized call, uh, thanking them for their gift, letting them know what they helped us accomplish this year, inviting them to learn more about what we're gonna be doing in the upcoming year. And again, highlighting some of those donors. Let's talk about our monthly donors. Let's talk about our major gift givers. Let's let people know, obviously with their permission, but let people know that we really appreciate them. Again, staying in touch. So we don't want to be somebody that just comes up when we want a donation. No one wants that friend who only comes out when they need something. Donors are really about building a relationship with. A lot of people, as I said, do have a hesitation about overly communicating, which is why it's important that we communicate regularly, but we have the kind of journey that I highlighted earlier today where it's not just asks. If all you're doing is asking them for donations over and over and over, then yes, 
those communications are not going to work. They're probably going to get tired of it. They're probably going to start to tune it out. But if we communicate regularly, we're staying top of mind. We're letting them know about the impact of their work. We're letting them know about the things that are upcoming for us. We're letting them know about other ways to get engaged and involved. We're going to stand out in a large crowd of nonprofits and build those strong relationships. Let them know about events, send updates, check in regularly, have phone calls, write personalized emails, get feedback, send surveys, show that you know who your donors are and care about them. Gratitude is something else that we're going to want to focus on when we're talking about those communications. This has been an overall theme of what I've been discussing so far. So we want to include uh, gratitude keywords because of you, with your help. Things that let people understand that we appreciate and can't do this without the uh, support of our donors. Come up with fun ways to be able to uh, thank them and recognize them. Host a donor appreciation event. Your donor appreciation event is not going to be a major fundraising event. It's not going to be something where we're looking to get a lot of donations out of our donors. It really is going to be something that we're showing our appreciation for them. This is about building the long-term relationship that's going to lead to future donations that helps retain more of those donors that increased the average lifetime value of those donors. I wanted to pause again to see if we had any questions on some of the things that we've walked through here so far, whether it's communications or metrics um, or anything that you'd like me to dive a little bit deeper into. All right, we will keep moving along. Again, please feel free to use the chat if you have any other questions. So we're going to be talking about some of those effective retention strategies. What can we do to increase that retention rate from 45%? The more your donors know about what you do, the more reasons they have to continue donating. So let's make it interesting. As I mentioned, real life stories are a really impactful way to stand out. Lots of your donors are being asked for donations from lots of nonprofits. My inbox is full of uh, asks for donations. Things that stand out is when I can think about these sorts of real life stories. I mentioned the organization um, that I worked with who is a shelter for unhoused members of their community. Very regular part of their uh, communications was just sending little highlight stories about people whose lives were impacted by their work. Those are things that really stand out in a crowded inbox is learning a little bit more. Those are things that I'm going to remember. Incorporate a did you know portion in your outreach. Also on your website. Your website should have the sorts of portions where we're going to be talking about a little bit about what we do, our impact, about us. Share you and your staff and your board on your website. Make it personal. We don't want to donate to kind of like a faceless organization. We want to know who's making uh, the most of our dollars. So information is key. Do not hesitate to overshare your information when it comes to the impact that you're doing and the work that you do. Find fun ways to engage with people on social media. You know, newsletters, quizzes, fun facts, little pop-ins. Those are sorts of things uh, that go a really long way in terms of being able to help continue to build and sustain those sorts of relationships with our donors. Do things that are gonna make you stand out in a crowded field. Make sure we're introducing donation tiers. So one of the things that I see often is people will have a PayPal page or a similar type of donation page where there is no sort of suggested amount or impact statement it's just a blank. So now I'm just kind of coming up off the top of my head. What do I want to donate? Now let's look at some of these sorts of examples. 
Offer suggested donation amounts that emphasize the impact. Rather than saying, you know, please donate. How about saying uh, $100 supports three meals or, daily, or meals daily for a week. If you made a $100 a month donation every single month, you would provide three people with daily meals every single month. I'm seeing these different sorts of amounts. I might come in with, in my mind, a specific amount that I want to give. But seeing the sort of impact that I can make, it might adjust my one-time gift. It might uh, motivate me to move from a one-time gift of a certain amount to maybe a smaller but more regular monthly donation. And again, that golden donation is really important. If I sign up for a monthly donation, I am 60% more likely to follow up with a donation the following year. Or think about different giving tiers. $25 a month is an ambassador of the organization. $1,000 a month is a superstar. We're now going to, in the back end of our systems I showed you before, start to build out tags and labels for our different donors. We're going to identify and have a list of all my superstars and all my heroes and all my champions and all my ambassadors. And they're going to get regular sorts of communications based on those giving levels. And we're going to share the impact of their gift. People who go, if at certain different levels, superstars, Maybe we invite them to come in and have a personal visit with us. Maybe all heroes get a personalized phone call um, from the executive director. Maybe all champions get a personalized handwritten letter by our executive director. Maybe $25 a month ambassadors are invited to uh, learn about more volunteer opportunities. Having these are going to help us share the impact of our gift and also are going to help us refine our uh, email segmentation and communication segmentation. So here's an example of one. And I'm actually going to show you this page live. So this is one of our nonprofits, Dylan's Wings of Change. So this is our homepage. When I click to donate, I go to their Mighty Cause donation page. So what you'll see here is I'm not leaving their website. I'm staying on their page. I'm going to a third-party landing page. I'm not going to PayPal. I'm not going to Mighty Cause's website. I'm staying on their page. So they have total control of the look, the messaging, builds a lot of initial trust. I want to highlight some things on this page. Help keep our wingman program successful at all. I already understand why this is important. Those built-in gratitude language. We cannot achieve our mission to foster empathy and build genuine connections between humans without your valuable, valuable support. You will create your own butterfly effect by enabling more students and schools to access our unique Wingman Youth Leadership Program. Immediate call to action, donate today. Don't need to wait to see exactly what they want me to do. Highlighting the importance of monthly donations. Have you considered becoming a monthly donor? This provides stable and continuous support for our programs. A lot of the things that we've been talking about thus far today, all immediately available on their donation page. Now, those preset amounts and an impact statement. $50 funds a student to attend a wingman workshop. One thing that you can also do, and I highly recommend, have monthly be your default option. One-time donation is still here, but let them know as soon as they come on the page, hey, $50 a month funds a student to attend our workshop. Making a monthly donation would mean that every single month you made another student's experience possible. Then I also want to highlight here custom questions. So this is what I was mentioning before. Here they're using it to identify, I would like to start a program. I like to book a wingman workshop. This is going to help me build out those relationships with those donors after the fact. We're also going to ask people to get involved in the fundraising efforts here. This is a very, very clear, clean, easy, and effective donation page. This is what an effective donation page looks like 
These are the sorts of things that we want to incorporate into all of our donation pages. One thing is we're gonna to wanna to make sure that making giving is easy. Uh, this is a true story. I I live in Washington, D.C. I was walking in my neighborhood and I passed by a coffee shop um, that I noticed uh, was actually also a nonprofit. Uh, they mentioned on um, the outside of their web of their shop that making a donation uh, would allow them to be able to provide a program in which they feed members of the community facing food insecurity. Um, so I immediately wanted to make a contribution. Uh, so they had a QR code. Uh, I pulled up the QR code on my phone and the process to make a donation was so difficult. I got all the way home and was still not even halfway through the process. Uh, I was frustrated and I wanted to give up. Uh, my wife is committed so that she took over my phone and finished through the process. But it was so difficult. I wanted to make a contribution and I should be able to do so in the moment. So make it simple. People are often going to go to your website. Let's make sure that right as you saw on the um, Dylan's Wings of Change, click easy donate button, takes me right to the page. The buttons are right there. I can complete that donation in just a few moments. 20% of donations in 2022 were made from mobile phones. So it's incredibly important that people are able to make those donations on their phones. And use an embedded form. Using an embedded form is shown to have a higher conversion rate of visitors to donors. So the more, uh, the easier it is, the fact that it's embedded, when we have preset options, when we have multiple payment options, you're going to convert more visitors into donors and more donors into recurring donors when you make the process simple and informative. Hey, Josh, uh, just a, a second, um, a question, uh, two questions have come through. Sure. Um, how much time do you spend on uh, year end current donor requests? On how much time spent on year-end donor requests? Uh, is there any elaboration on what you mean by uh, donor requests? Uh, not directly. Um, so maybe just year-end donors of sure. how much time spending? Yeah. So year-end donations are incredibly important. Um, here is a really important fact for everybody. 30% of all calendar donations in 2024 are going to occur in the month of December alone. So about a third of all donations that are gonna happen this year have not yet happened. Actually about 10% of all donations this calendar year are gonna take place in the last 48 hours of the year. Uh, there's a lot of reasons for this, both for tax deductible purposes, um, as well as just uh, associating year end with a time of giving, um, but it's gonna be really critically important. Year end giving kicks off with Giving Tuesday so Giving Tuesday is the last Tuesday of November. It's an international day of giving. Uh, so Giving Tuesday isn't assigned to any specific uh, group or organization. It's just a general day of giving. Uh, and it's meant to be the kickoff to year-end fundraising. It's really important that we start to use Giving Tuesday. We don't have to see it as an end-all be-all that we get all of our donations for year-end on that one day. But what we're thinking about and trying to do is condition our donors to start to associate this with the beginning of the season in which there are going to be a lot of donations. <laughs> the most effective uh, year uh, Giving Tuesday year-end plans will start communicating with their donors in October. Um, as I mentioned, uh, the donor path is not immediately asking for a donation each time. What we're going to be doing over the next, uh, what we should be doing as a nonprofit over the next uh, eight weeks leading up to Giving Tuesday is sharing impacts, work that we've done this year, sharing personal stories, um, highlighting uh, you know people or those that were impacted by your work, starting to talk about things that we're going to be doing in the upcoming year, reminding them of Giving Tuesday and year end. It's not something that has to be overwhelming in terms of time. I would say that the average organization uh, really should put in no more than about an hour to two hours um, a week when we're thinking about you know this sort of fundraising. That's speaking to, again, the sorts of nonprofits that are mostly populate uh, our webinars and who come to Mighty Cause, which are the small to medium-sized nonprofits. Uh, it isn't something that we really need to be dedicating 
um, full time too. Um, but it is something that we should be spending about an hour or two each week communicating with our donors, seeing our most recent donations, making sure that we're sending out those uh, thank yous and welcome messages, and also sending out those um, follow ups. And again, when you have systems like the Mighty Cause automated emails, um, our donor retention reports, um, connecting the things like MailChimp and Constant Contact, we can also save and streamline time by making that process a little bit more automated. Um, another question, um, how do you recommend financial transparency, transparency and messaging when the vast majority of your nonprofit's budget is for staff to run your programs? We don't have many material costs for programs themselves, but we need staff to run them. How to make that bite size, uh, uh, how to make that bite size and engaging when it seems this uh, examples you gave are material expenses. Your donation provided X or X number for our clients. That's not how many service-based nonprofits can qualify expenses. Do you have any? Sure. I think that, you know, that is a great question. So I do think that there is a bit of a misnomer, maybe in the general population, when they think about the fact that there's staff involved in uh, donations. Donations do go towards staff because uh, staff requires unrestricted funds in a lot of uh, instances. Grants aren't going to be able to cover a lot of our staff needs. But however, as you mentioned, the services that you provide are not going to be made possible um, without uh, the use of your staff. I would still just think about some of the programs or things that you do. Um, you know, in your year end reports, if you're sending out annual reports, um, you will be sharing um, in the interest of transparency. And that's talking about the specific annual reports when we're sharing out like our numbers. Um, you know, that's pretty much just like a financial document. You know, we will be sharing uh, in the interest of transparency that, you know, costs are going towards staff. But when you're talking about messaging, um, exactly just kind of what you were discussing, uh, our work is not made possible without this staff. Uh, think about, you know, how many people are able to be, um, you know, what programs are made possible, what services are made possible um, as a result of having your staff. Uh, without your donations, what wouldn't be uh, able to be possible? What are things that we wouldn't be able to do um, as a result? Um, so really just think about it and focus on, again, that donation uh, that is taking care of, that is helping to pay the staff uh, or the salaries of a staff member. Share what that staff member does. What does that staff member do? And how does that relate to your work? Because uh, that's still going to be able to cut through a lot of the messaging that's out there directly to your individual donor and help them, again, understand how that donation makes it possible. I hope that makes sense. Yeah. And I would also add on is the... The cost is the salary of that person, right? Even if it's not, um, you know, it's it's a program that you don't have to invest goods to run it. If the good is having an individual run it, then their salary, what are you, what is the cost to have someone work on it monthly? That's the cost, right? You need to have generated for your organization per month. So I would think of it in, in that way is that's how many funds you need a month to help successfully run that program. I think, again, that's a really great way to be able to, uh, to be able to help, uh, you know, communicate some of the need there. Um, you know, thinking about just uh, the, there's a really great nonprofit in my neighborhood that does um, youth art programs uh, for students after school. Um, and also does a lot of really great summer programs. Um, it's a nonprofit that I really like. Uh, their staff, uh, you know, a lot of what their funds are going towards is uh, their staff to be able to teach classes without those donations uh, that are going towards their staff members. They're not going to be, they're only able to host, you know, X amount of students. They're only able to host X amount of programs. Um, they're only able to host X amount of classes. Uh, so again, at the end of the day, even if that is something that's going towards something like that, and it's not necessarily going towards, uh, you know, not everything is going towards art supplies. Some of that is going towards things that are like, um, you know, staff members' uh, uh, salaries. They're not able to provide those sorts of classes at camps and programs if they don't have those staff members. So those donations are still making that possible. Just to mention again on recurring giving, it's something that I always really like to highlight for nonprofits. I just want to highlight this number right here. The average one-time gift is $121 in America. The average monthly gift is $25 a month. So let's think about that in two ways. 
$25 a month is uh, $300 a year. So by making a smaller monthly gift rather than a larger one-time gift, my value as a donor this year is $179 more. Now let's jump back to those retention rates. A one-time donor, this person who gave $121 only has a 20% likelihood that they're going to donate again the following year. The person who gave $25 a month has a 60% odds of giving again the following year. So that means... Their value, if they maintain that $25 a month, is now $600 over the course of two years compared to a one-time $121 gift. Additionally, recurring donors are those that are engaged. They're likely to be champions. They're likely to fundraise on your behalf. They're likely to be ambassadors. They're likely to make introductions and share your work. Recurring giving is what helps us grow and what helps us be more sustainable. Think about giving a unique name. So have those you know, tags that we mentioned before. Something that's kind of branded to our giving program. And what we could do, again, looking back at our donations, if I was to go into our system, I could look at the donations here and look at the last 12 months. Let's look at everybody who gave between $100 and $250. Let's thank them for that gift. Tell them what we did with that uh, donation. And then ask for $25 a month and share the impact of that gift. Now we're taking these 51 donations and stewarding them up between $250 over the course of the year, increasing the likelihood that we're going to retain them the following year by a pretty significant amount. As I mentioned, make it your follow-up ask. Once someone has already raised their hand and demonstrated that they're ready, willing, and able to make a donation to your organization, let's follow that welcome pattern. Let's build out communications. Let's thank them. Let's share the impact of our gifts. Let's have surveys. Let's receive feedback. Let's let them know about other ways to get involved. And now when we make that ask, we're going to ask for a donation. Maybe it's based off of you donating $15. Would you like to donate $15 a month? Maybe it's you don't need $100. That donation was the equivalent of X, Y, and Z. A donation of $25 a month would help us with X, Y, and Z. And again, it doesn't always have to be about a specific impact. If sometimes some nonprofits, that's a little bit of a challenge to have a specific, hey, this doesn't necessarily feed X amount of people. That's okay. We still want a message like I showed you in the Dylan's uh, Wings program. They talked about in their uh, uh, the monthly, if I showed it back here, This helps make our work more sustainable and continuous. As simple as that helps people understand that those recurring donations makes this sustainable and continuous. If you care about the types of services and programs that we provide, a monthly donation is going to allow us to be able to provide this long-term and some more. And then always include a simple link to your donation page and have it be a simple quick page like I showed you with the Ellen's Wings of Change. Again, everyone who gave $120 or less last year, maybe reach out to those people for $10 a month. It's going to steward a lot of them up the giving ladder, and it's going to build out longer-term giving. So let's make a specific ask. We also have, I just want to highlight, on our website, you can always go to uh, Mighty Cause's website uh, for free fundraising resources. If you go to our returning, uh, donations page, we actually have templates for email and social media that you can use. And then continue to build the relationships. Peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, where people create a fundraiser on your behalf. People are 10 times more, uh, or three times more likely to make a donation if they're asked by someone they personally know rather than the organization itself. Ask them to show up to our events. Ask, invite them to opportunities to learn more. Invite them to opportunities to volunteer. Let's start to recruit some of these individuals to be involved as a board member. These are great non-monetary asks, but are going to continue to build relationships. People who are investing their time into your organization are going to want to continue to invest financially as well. So build a community. I mentioned hosting annual donor events. 
It's built for great transparency and also building relationships. Have specific events, maybe for recurring donors or for your uh, major gift givers. Find ways to help uh, let them know that they're appreciated. Maybe build out a group. Um, for example, uh, I have two rescue dogs um, that me and my wife uh, fostered and then adopted. Uh, there is a great fast, uh, Facebook group um, for uh, people who have fostered or adopted dogs uh, from within that program. It's a great resource to us. Um, people share uh, other resources where you can go boarding, recommendations for vets. Have you seen uh, this sort of issue with a cat or a dog? There's a separate one for the cats and the dogs so that people can get more specific information. Great way to continue again to stand out and build a stronger community. And orchestrate individual meetups as well. And again, let's think about moving our donors up the pipeline or down the pipeline. Let's have continuous asks. We don't want to just accept that one-time $121 donation. Let's think about, hey, a smaller amount, but broken up into monthly amounts. Then the following year, maybe asking for a slightly larger amount. And again, thinking about why. Maybe building out those different giving layers and groups, as I mentioned. Those different tiers, giving them names. And encouraging donors over time to continue to move through those plans. We've walked a lot of uh, here today through our donor management software. Very important for us to track those donations, those interactions, segment our donors. So I've walked us through the Mighty Cause uh, supporter tool here today. The ability to see all of my do donations, all of my donor retention, to click on my supporters, to click on a page, of a donor, see their history of donations, organized fundraising efforts, email sent, having a good understanding of who our donors are, critical to building relationships. So hopefully you're seeing how all of this comes together. The biggest things I'd like for everyone to take away from this today is that relationships with our donors are a life cycle. If we're just focused on sending out individual asks and trying to receive these one-time donations or only fundraising when we have a specific need, you're essentially on a treadmill and we're not getting anywhere. What we wanna do is build an impactful and strong relationship with our donors that is gonna make our gift or our uh, mission more sustainable. It is going to encourage our donors to be personally and financially invested in our organization, to be ambassadors, to take on larger relationships and help increase our impact. We have two upcoming webinars. Um, we'll have a number of webinars, obviously, um, but two of our webinars, as you can see, per our, my conversation about Giving Tuesday earlier, uh, we have one on Wednesday, October 9th, on matching grants for Giving Tuesday, and then on October 23rd, on communications guides for Giving Tuesday, and plenty of resources on our website as well. That is all I have for you here. Um, before we wrap up, are there any other questions um, that I can help answer? Um, and of course, everyone will get a recording and slides from this um, as well. Okay, I don't see any other questions popping um, up. I I will say everyone, um, if you want to have a, a conversation with one of our um, or one of our fundraising development specialists like myself, um, you can easily do so by going to our website and requesting a demonstration. If you want to learn more about our platform or our tools or how people are using the strategies, um, we have a number of different plans that everyone can use. They're very meant to be very simple and easy um, and help with a lot of things that we talked about today. So please feel free to reach out. Yes. And after this webinar, um, there will be a survey that pops up. Um, feel free to answer that if you want to we'll ask, like, do you want to have a call or demo with one of our team members? If you answer that, that will also let us know. So um, whatever works for you. Uh, um, as well in that survey, if there's any other topics that you want us to cover in a future webinar, please let us know. You know, we are here to 
help you and help with your fundraising in any way we can. So let us know. Um, thank you so much for everyone joining. I hope it was helpful. Thank you so much, Josh. And I hope everyone has a great rest of their day. Thank you, everyone. All right. Bye.